So we are going to start, and I do need you to put this into the chat, and it seems like a very simple question, but I want you to think about uh, what, or I want you to spend a few moments thinking about what you think numeracy is, and then I want you to put a comment uh, in the comment box when you think you've got an idea of what numeracy actually is, and I'll give you a few moments to do that. All right, some really good uh, responses coming through there. And of course, all of you can see what everyone else is entering. So, and it's nice to see many of you writing the fact that, that it is about, uh, about using the mathematics rather than just knowing about it. And that is one of the things about this particular standard is that um, the students have to know how to use the maths in order to, to solve particular problems. I'll click through and give you uh, one definition. It's by no means the definition. It's just one person's interpretation of um, what they think it is. So uh, it's the ability uh, to confidently and accurately apply mathematics and statistics to everyday life. And it's really important to remember that statistics is there as well. So statistics is part of that, um, that numeracy foundation knowledge. Uh, and people tend to forget that. Okay, and to ensure success in further learning across the curriculum and in work. So we have to get students to be capable in using that correctly. Okay, so here is a definition of uh, numeracy again, but where it comes in, uh, in terms of, uh, I guess, the matrix for the numeracy standard and what's expected of students for uh, for their knowledge that's required uh, as this co-requisite for NCEA. So the process ideas, there are three of them, and I'm sort of, I'm going to make an assumption that you, many of you may not have seen much of this, and so I apologize if you know this really well and you go, oh, you know, why is he repeating it? But I will just go through this, and, and a lot of this is stuff we repeat because the process ideas and the content ideas are pivotal for um, the knowledge that students have to have uh, in order to, I guess, uh, pass the, the assessment task at the end of the day. So there are three process ideas. Now, the standard lists the process ideas or calls them outcomes. And so you'll hear, when Jan and I are talking, you'll hear us sort of switch between the word process ideas and outcomes. And it's important for you to understand that they're exactly the same thing. It's just the standard use the word, uses the word outcomes, and we in the, the matrix, I guess they use the word process ideas. So there's three process ideas, so three basic um, processes that students must be able to do uh, in this numeracy uh, assessment, and that's they must be able to formulate uh, mathematical and or statistical approaches to solving problems in a range of meaningful situations. Okay, so basically they're applying the maths, and, um, and I'll give we'll give more definition on that shortly. They need to use the mathematics and statistics to meet the numeracy demands of a range of meaningful situations. And then lastly, 
they need to be able to explain the reasonableness of the mathematical and statistical responses to situations. In, now there are, sorry, yep. In the material put out by the Ministry of Education, you will see that they use processes and from here on in NZQA are using outcomes. So in a lot of the material that we put together, you'll find that it's processes slash outcomes, but I think most of the material you'll be working with in the future, it's outcomes. So yeah, probably good for us to get used to using that. Yep. I know it's confusing and I know it's annoying, but we are not in control. Sorry. Okay. Pat. That's okay. Uh, that's what I need you to do, Jan, is just um, cut in when I've missed stuff. So the content ideas, there are seven of them. And again, the, uh, they're listed here in the most basic form. We do elaborate on this shortly in, in some later slides. So uh, the seven content ideas, operations on numbers, the relationships, spatial properties, uh, location, navigation, measurement, statistics, and data, and elements of chance. Now, if you look at those things, you, you actually think, okay, actually that covers quite a broad range of stuff. And it does, absolutely does. And I think most of you would recognize the fact that this is uh, quite a broad um, knowledge base with which our students are going to be assessed upon. Uh, and it um, gives great scope for what can be asked within uh, any particular task or, or activities that we can get the students to do. So now, it's... In that you're going to need to make sure that you cover the whole curriculum document because all aspects will occur in the assessment task, yep. all the content ideas. Yep. Yep. So again, it's really important to realize that numeracy is only one small aspect. There is there's way more, there's a lot more stuff uh, within what we would teach in the classroom going from year one effectively right up to let's just say year nine year ten uh, especially um, so numeracy is only one aspect of it and uh, later on again we talk about the fact that we are we're not here today to tell you that you teach to this uh, this is not what we are promoting at all it's just that um, you need to understand what the key parts are which the assessment's going to focus on but actually we're not promoting that we teach to this because if you did you st the students wouldn't get full coverage of the curriculum and that's really important as Jan said before we don't teach to this we teach the curriculum because that's our base document but today is about focusing on uh, what's important for the students to be able to understand what's required for um, the, the common assessment activity. One of the traps I fell into early was looking at the process ideas, <laughs> still having on the hat of achievement standards. And you'll see that in the achievement standards, we go through all of the processes. This is saying that each question is mainly focusing on one of those three elements. So, you know, it's a huge difference between them. There's far more scaffolding and that sort of thing. And that is not what we want to be teaching in our main mathematics courses. In fact, we hope that this automatically falls out. Yeah, yeah. this uh, in theory shouldn't require any extra teaching it should just be part of what you naturally do within the classroom and yes there are times when you might want to have a little bit more focus on applying the mathematics which is good practice anyway um, but again like I said today it's just about honing in and giving you clarity around what the expectations are ultimately of the standard so again a question for you to ask yourself you don't have to comment on this in the comment box but it's something for you to be thinking about uh, in your own teaching programs as, as what are you currently doing um, that covers the learning of numeracy? And you might say, well, I, I've got a maths class, that's all fine. And, and you, if you cover all aspects of the curriculum, then more than likely you are doing enough uh, to cover the knowledge base. It's just maybe, uh, maybe you need to do some more work around the application potentially. So uh, reviewing what you're currently doing and identifying the strengths and weaknesses and then are there ways in which you could change uh, what you do to improve the numeracy outcomes for your learners? And again, we don't need any responses necessarily in the chat box, but those are questions for you to go back and reflect on 
you know, in, in, the, in the planning for next year, especially, or even coming up uh, as this year progresses. Anything you want to add there to that, Jan? No, in responding to the questions, the students are going to be asked quite a few in the way of multi-choice questions. The extended response, the reporting sort of question um, for the third of the processes is still only referring to one or two sentences. So there's not a lot of actual working in the mathematics that they actually have to show. And we need to be emphasizing that in our teaching and learning, yep. that they do need to put that working in, but they're not going to need to demonstrate that within the numeracy questions. Yep. Now, it's really important to remember uh, that uh, all teachers are teachers of numeracy and all teachers are teachers of literacy. Now, this isn't uh, this discussion around numeracy and also the discussion that's, that's occurring around literacy is not a discussion that should be occurring um, just with mathematics teachers or just with teachers of English. Actually, every teacher in your school, regardless of whether it's a primary school, an intermediate or an area school or, or a secondary school, every teacher needs to be having these discussions around, OK, all right, I teach geography. What can I do to help? Um, help teach some layers of literacy? What can I do to help teach some layers of numeracy? And those discussions should be occurring within your schools as well. Um, yes, you know, math teachers and English teachers could do this on their own, but they don't have to. And that's, again, not, uh, not what's promoted here. We need to have students understanding that both numeracy uh, and literacy exists across all learning areas. Uh, and uh, we all have to work together to, to help our students um, improve their levels of numeracy and literacy. And it's not just a maths and English teachers problem, so to say, actually. It's everybody's job to, to, uh, to tie this up. And again, I'll give some more detail around that shortly in terms of how we can make that happen. So what does that mean? It's conversations that should be occurring. In the short term, you may need to support other learning areas to include numeracy into their teaching practice. And there should, those, there should be some discussions occurring with that now. Uh, we probably do need to have a greater responsibility around the area of numeracy. And in the long term, all teachers should have the confidence to weave the mathematics and statistics into their learning areas. Now, if you aren't aware, and if you've got, if you've opened up um, my slides and are running them sort of simultaneous to this. Um, there is something called the Numeracy Pedagogy Guides. And these have been produced by the Ministry of Education. And although they do not cover every other learning area, they do cover a few. If you go in there, you will see that they've created booklets with suggestions where another learning area can uh, uh, help with um, to help, to help teach numeracy skills, for example, and there's some suggestions given in those. And that's a really good starting point because you could go out and you could have conversations with, if you're a math teacher in a secondary school, for example, you could have conversations with someone who teaches a social science, for example, and say, hey, look, this, this guide's here. Have you seen it? Uh, what could we do to help numeracy be taught uh, in um, in a social science. It's not about teaching everything, it's just they might, they might do graphing, for example, and we might just need to work with them to ensure they're doing it in the same way that we are in mathematics. Those guides are very useful. That is a hyperlink there. I think I've added it elsewhere in the slides as well. So you can just Google that. You can just go to the um, nca.education.govt.nz website. Uh, it'll be there. It's not hard to find. So um, yeah, go have a look at those and if you haven't already seen them. Okay, so numeracy and literacy are co-requisites for NCA. So all learners will need to obtain it. And they will need to obtain it before they get, um, they, before they gain uh, an, an award of NCA level one or an award of NCA level two or an award of NCA level three. Now, normally for most students, it'll be they need it before they get an award of NCA level one. However, some students may get enough credits in theory would give them NCA level one, but if they haven't passed the numeracy or the literacy, they don't get the award. So they don't get the official uh, award of the uh, NCA until they've passed the numeracy and 
the literacy. And the level that, that we're aiming for here is that the students have to have full mastery over curriculum level four, right? So basically they've, they've covered everything and are competent in doing the work that's at curriculum level four and are basically just starting to work at curriculum level five. That's the level, level of questions um, that we're aiming at here. There are some teachers thinking of leaving it till the higher levels in schools. I would suggest that you need to be very cautious of that because there are elements that when you look at the content ideas, actually we don't cover so much in the higher levels. So just be cautious that it, you do it, preferably in the earlier years when you're covering the broad perspective instead of focusing on calculus or statistics covers both. Yep. So, I mean, obviously, if you are at, um, if you're at a primary school, then pretty much everything that you do around uh, work around mathematics, statistics, numeracy will contribute towards this, absolutely, and it'll help the students get up to a point where they're ready to go. Um, maybe, I mean, I'm not um, saying this to the students will be at curriculum level four by the time they leave primary school, but certainly the, the base knowledge is, is all essential that comes from the primary school. Intermediates, of course, you're still working towards that. And then when they get to high school, the students can sit this from year nine, all right? So the students cannot do it in year eight or year seven which was a, a originally mooted way back when it first sort of came out. The students can only sit this when they're at year nine or above. Uh, so we need the students to come in and once they get to year nine or year 10, if they've got a solid foundation of knowledge and their numeracy coming in there, then it's not a huge leap for them to, to be ready to sit the common assessment activity in whatever year that's appropriate for them. And some will come in and they'll be super duper mathematicians and they could do it on day one, when they start at high school, well, of course they can't, but they could do it in their first year at high school. Some will take two or three years to get there or four years, and, and that's okay. The whole idea behind this common assessment activity is the students do it when, when I guess, when we think they're ready. Um, the students may not necessarily know, but, but if we think they're ready to sit the assessment, then that's when they should do it. Okay, so the students must demonstrate competency in the three outcomes, so the, pre, the three outcome, sorry, the three process ideas, and through all seven content ideas. And that's what Jan alluded to before. That won't be checked off that they have um, necessarily got a question correct in each of the content areas. That, that would just be a massive matrix to check every student off and processes and that sort of thing but it will be a sample and should therefore require knowledge well it will require knowledge for the content ideas okay so now here's some really important stuff so the assessment will be in the form of an online common assessment activity it is proposed that when it's fully up and running it will be occurring at the end of term two uh the end of term three and the end of term four so basically um at, at the moment for, for the pilot schools, it's week nine. Uh, so this, this year it's, it's the end of term two and the end of term three. So week nine of term two and, the, and week nine of term three. It will look similar once it's fully implemented across all schools. Okay, so common assessment activity. It is written by NZQA. It's assessed in the schools and marked by NZQA. So it's, again, I know there's been some misunderstanding uh, from some teachers thinking that they have to mark it like they did with the MCAT. No, it is marked externally. All the schools have to do is just, um, I guess, plan for how the assessment activity is going to occur uh, on the particular day that you're sitting it. Okay, it is anticipated that there will be roughly 30 questions. Very, you know, that's, that's don't quote us on that. It's around about 30, um, but it's a reasonably good number to be thinking about. Um, and the student, most students should be able to answer it within an hour, but time should not be a barrier. Allow about 90 minutes if you are uh, sort of planning for uh, how the students are going to do it in your school. Uh, but there is no end limit to this. In theory, in theory, uh, uh, NCQA and the, both the ministry both say that actually a student can take two hours if they want. I don't think they'll need to. Um, 
And of course, there's all the things around organization that uh, creates issues if we give unlimited time. Um, but for some students who, who just takes longer to answer stuff online, they might need a bit more time and, and they're allowed to have that. Okay, so as Jan was saying before, there is no set score. There's no rigid schedule here. Um, when this is marked and when the, a decision is made as to whether a student has achieved the numeracy or not, they're looking across all the seven content ideas on balance and then all three process ideas. Now they must show uh, the ability to be able to answer questions um, and, and to show knowledge across the three process ideas, that, that's non-negotiable. Whether they have to show knowledge in all seven content ideas, that's, um, it's, it's a more holistic marking. Well, going back a bit on that, the three process ideas that they have to get, it's not showing equal strength in all of them. You may find that a student has strength in two of the process ideas, but as long as they can show evidence of some knowledge and ability um, within the third area, but they do have to show some evidence of all of those. So they may have one area that they are weaker in than the other. So it's not going, it, this is not saying they have to get any um, amount of any one of them. When they have to cut score, um, meetings, they may well come up with the fact that they only need two in some area um, of the processes. The one they struggled with most was outcome three in the trials last year. And so the requirement there could have been, you know, lower, but they would have to look holistically across the student's paper that was in that situation and say, yes, they can do all three, even if minimal in one of those areas. Yes, yeah, so it's, it, it is very broad in terms of the way that's going to be marked. It's, you can't say, oh, you know, what exactly, what exactly do they need to do to pass? Because nobody can give you an answer on that. It's, it's very much dependent on what the paper, sorry, what the, are what the answers are in front of them for the student and then the decision has to be made uh, with a judgment uh, placed over it. Okay, so <clears throat> what are the, um, the seven, um, seven things that they need to know? So operations on numbers, so they need to be able to solve problems that require operations on numbers, which is logical, understanding the relative size of those numbers and making sense of the answers in context, in context. Uh, they need to be able to work uh, with mathematical relationships. So that's, um, you know, that can be, uh, you know, looking at uh, patterns, potentially of graphing, things like that. Uh, they need to understand and use spatial properties and representations of objects. So that's sort of geometry. Location, navigation, some of that's quite obvious, but uh, you've got um, coordinates there as well. Measurement. Uh, again, that's an obvious one. So everything to do with measurement there uh, and also recognizing a degree of precision. Now, an important thing there, and Jan has highlighted in other documents that in terms of units, if the, if the, um, if the question says how many meters uh, is, uh, how many meters is the perimeter of the shape, then the students won't have to put meters down in their answer because it's already in the sort of the, the statement of the question. However, if it says, what is the perimeter of the shape, for example, the students must get in the habit of putting the units down, okay, because it could potentially uh, influence a final grade for them. With statistics and data, they need to understand and reason with statistics and data, and then with elements of chance, which of course is probability, they need to be able to interpret that. Now the processes, uh, so the students for process one, um, I guess to summarize that, and Jan, you might have a different take on this, uh, is, is they need to know about the mathematics in this one. Is that, a, is that a fair sort of statement in terms of process one? Yeah, so it is likely that the majority of questions in for um, process one and two 
will most likely be in the form of multi-choice. So it's going to be recognizing the putting of the numbers from the words questions in the right places, you know, and in the right operations and that sort of thing. It's not intended, as I said before, that any question will require more than um, one or two words. If it's about process, it's one and two, and maybe one or two sentences as response to the um, outcome three. Sorry, process three, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so it's going to be short. It's going to require the students to know how a correct line in the working of a problem may be, but they're not going to be doing, demonstrating that working within doing these questions. So the second one, so uh, process two or process B is sort of, we sort of skip between using letters and numbers, but I'm sure you can follow what we, we, we're talking about here. So this one here is applying the mathematics or using the mathematics. Okay, and so the stuff in yellow is, is, is sort of um, not what's on the official documentation. The bullet points are what's stated um, on the um, Ministry of Education website. But for process two or process B, uh, the candidate uh, may be required to select the correct solution or write the answer as a statement or you know but only one or two words the evidence of the ability to actually solve the problem is needed for this outcome but even if it is just simply choosing the correct solution so process one is basically um, showing the students showing that they know what maths is being used process two is more about using it and then the third one process c as you can see there's a lot more here and these bullet points aren't um, that they're not a list of um, sort of the students must be able to show all of these in any one particular question. This, these are just types of uh, skills that the students uh, should be able to have going into to answering these pro this pro particular process. So these are what I'd call sort of the extended response. They're, they're reasoning, uh, giving some justification. Um, they but, So they do have to write stuff here for this one. There is no doubt about this. So there is a layer of literacy that's required in this, not that it's going to be marked based upon correct spelling or anything like that, but the students have to be able to write at least, I'd say, one sentence um, and, and maybe even more in order to justify something or give an explanation or to show some working or any of those sorts of things where, where they sort of have to uh, explain the reasonableness or, or, or something along those lines. Okay, so I've just I've just uh, repeated this uh, page here, just so that you see that when we come to do some questions, uh, we talk about process A, process B, and process C. So I've just got those labelled up there so that you know what I'm referring to. Other people will call it process one, process two, and process three. Um, the only reason I've got A, B, and C is because the the questions that you, you're going to do shortly just they refer to process A, B, and C, and that's just all that that is. Okay, the uh, unpacking the numeracy document, if you haven't looked at that, uh, we're not going to go through it in detail here. It has a lot more detail, which says what is not assessed. And it's really quite clear. They give some very clear definition about some of the mathematics, which is not part of what's assessed. It does not mean that you do not teach it in year nine or year 10 or year seven or year eight. It just means that it's not assessed. Um, it's beyond the scope of, of, the of this common assessment activity. It's a very important paper to um, read that unpacking of the document because it does clarify so much what you need to do and what yep. Yep. it's not. For it's, if you haven't, if you've done um, very little around numeracy uh, at the moment, then uh, it's probably one of the best documents that you can start with because it really just lays it out really nicely in terms of this is um, what the students don't need to know. And this is sort of roughly what the students should be knowing or should have knowledge of in order to be able to, to show that they're numerate in this particular task. I did write a page document on that yeah. because it does help to clarify whether you're talking about process one, two or three. Yep. Okay, so um, it's really enough of me talking now. 
what I've got in the next few slides are some questions. And these are sort of a, a sample of questions that have come from a booklet, uh, which you'll be able to access. Um, I'll give you the link to the, uh, this document at the end of the slideshow. But what I do want you to do so that I can see what so that we can see what questions come up in the chat as we go through this because it's really important that we go through this um, because this is how we would do it if we were um, doing it face to face is we'd give some questions and we'd give people an opportunity to work through the questions one so I, so hopefully they look at it and say actually do you know what the questions aren't that bad and and also two so that if there's something unusual in here um, you can ask it now uh, rather than going away and think, oh, if I need to ask that question while, while we had someone online. So again, if you've got my slides open, you can, um, you can obviously look at the slides already or I'll bring it up here. What I want, will do is I'll give, you, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a minute or two just to see if you can answer those three questions there. Uh, and then we'll go through and have a look at the answers and uh, also talk about which process or which outcome is being assessed in each question. So I'll stop talking and I'll give you a moment to work through that. is being what content area you think is being assessed and also the trickier one is see if you can try and figure out which process is being assessed now the official line here is that for any one question only one process is being um, marked so see if you can figure out for part a what the content is being what the content is which is being assessed and also what process then for part b and also for part c so throw those into the chat box once you um, have an, uh, once you've had a think about it, it's not necessarily always as easy as you think. Francis, you're only showing on the screen part A and B. Okay, oh, can you not see C? Not on the screen, no. Oh, I oh. can see C, it's fine. What is the probability that students in Mrs. Jones' class it's like m &Ms? Right, okay. Yep. Yeah, sorry, I had to try and squeeze it in so people could actually see all three questions. Yeah, I've got them printed so it's not yeah. Sure. Okay, so I'm aware of time, so I will just move things along, uh, just so that we're not, um, some people will be finished, and thank you to those who are, are giving these a go. Like I said, you will have access to these, um, digital, all the questions digitally after this uh, session today. So these questions were written in January, and uh, there were uh, still a lot of session going on about the processes, um, and we've had a greater clarification, I guess, um, subsequent to uh, January when this was put together. But those of you who um, those of you who answered that the, that question A was process C is correct. So process C or process three is, is probably the easiest one to pick in terms of questions because it's there's normally a nice big box or a big space um, for the students to to write in this. Um, and so uh, that's quite clear and if it says justify or explain well it, that's quite clear and it's, it's limited though you you two tell your kids two sentences yeah yeah it's not a novel yeah so it, if they can't do it in a couple of sentences well they just need to be um learning how to to trim that down so yes a was i'm not going to go through the answers because you can do this yourself but so process c and contents six on that so it is statistics there uh, the second one uh, is now we've got process A and B written there, but we we'll probably go with process B now. Uh, like I said, we can't have two labeled against it. It's just this document. We've stuck with it just because it was um, written a little while ago. 
And uh, just a second on that one, Francis. Why you can't um, go with two processes there? If this student was short in process A, um, as far as the evidence goes, you need to look at it holistically and say, yes, within that, they are showing sufficient evidence yeah. for um, process A. And of course, content one. And the last one um, is interesting. So the content there is this work with fractions and also probability. And that one's process A. So I'm aware of time. I'm not going to go through um, too many more questions uh, here. Can I ask a question, Francis? Yes, go for it. Uh, do we anticipate you know, a number of students for part C? They might give a percentage, mightn't they? You know, quite often students give a probability or percentage get mixed up, whereas we might teach them, you know, probability is a fraction or a decimal and percentage is a percentage. But what would is, I don't, is it multi, I don't, is it multi choice? No, that so they one, won't have that. Um, no, not necessarily. It, it doesn't say how they have to give that answer. So it can be as a, a fraction. It could be unsimplified fraction. It could be a simplified fraction. It could be a percentage. It could be a decimal. I can't see any reason why it couldn't be any of those. It doesn't say they must give it as a fraction. It's just yeah. the knowledge. So, I mean, okay, the schedule, I, I get that the schedule only has it as a fraction and maybe it should have stated the decimal form of it as well. So, no, I can't see uh, any form, any equivalent form should be acceptable. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. No, no, sorry, I'm just not, I, I, don't, I don't want to be uh, uh, picky, but I, I just find there's probably not much difference between question B and C then. If they can answer it as a percentage, that's asking the same thing. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you have yeah. To, and and that's the fault in the question. So, um, uh, but blame us because we we run oh, those right. questions in January. So there, there will be faults in the questions, and we get that. And um, you'd assume that the ones that the students get will not allow for that sort of crossover. So yeah, I get that. That's a fair comment, and it's just it's the fault in the question rather than um, we're just trying to get an idea across here. So fair yeah. enough. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And they'll be digitally marked, so it's unlikely that a question would actually give that um, variation acceptable in the yeah. answer. Yeah. We have actually, Francis, been working on these right through. Yeah. About last week, they were still being. Tweeted, yeah. But yeah. Yep. Um, so I skipped through the others, and I apologise for that. And it's always going to happen that uh, we were going to run out of time. But uh, what I've got here uh, is the link uh, that that Bitly link will take you to all the questions. There's about thirty five of them. Now I do need to stress because we haven't spoken about it here, but we do need to stress again that this is a digital exam. Okay, there is there is uh, not a choice for students to do this on paper. So when you're planning for this, it is planning for the students to have access to a device so that they can do this online. Um, we just need to make sure that's clear. Uh, the same with the literacy as well. Both of those are online uh, examinations run in exam format. Uh, and you have to nominate which day that you're going to do that if you're a pilot school this year. And you would already know about that if you're a pilot school. So the question was, can students use, pa use papers for the week? Yes, they can. They can bring in, um, no, in fact, they can be given blank paper. They're allowed calculators, of course. Absolutely, they're allowed. Yes, they are allowed working paper. Yes. There is a statement that was just put out this week. Unfortunately, some of the information is only available to pilot schools, but you know, it has got practice opportunities for the students to answer digitally and yeah, that yeah. sort of thing. Did that go to all schools, Francis? So, so that uh, I got an email yesterday. I'm not sure whether it's gone out to all schools. It may have gone out to principals, nominees. So, because um, I think someone's just asked it, is there going to be an online practice one? Yes, I think based upon what I saw yesterday, I had a really quick play with it. It looks like um, students can go to the NZQA website and there is now, um, I think it's last year's one, um, that students can go on and actually have a play with that. Um, someone says, will there be SAC for students? Yes, there will. If students are um, entitled to a special assessment conditions for their formal end of year examinations, they are entitled to those same um, so they're entitled to those same conditions for the numeracy and for the literacy. It does come with slightly different conditions because it's a, it's a digital exam and 
Um, schools have to figure through that though, because um, because we, there will no um, schools will not be getting in um, exam supervisors for this. That, that there is um, no sort of NTQA payment around that. Schools have to organise this in house. But yes, they are entitled to SAC if if they are at the end of the year. We can also put that post that came out from NZQA on our website. 